Oh, get going. Oh, get going. Good girl. Good girl. That's right. And a one rain stop. Good job. Good job. Give me that nose. There. Very nice. Very nice girl. Very good girl. Hi, I'm Missy Wren. Welcome to my Iron Free Riding DVD Series 1. By now you have finished my Training the Whole Horse DVD Series 1. And you see we have Tilly back. She went home for four months during the winter and now is back for some saddle refinement. I'm very fortunate to have her back because she has not had any training these last four months. And what's been surprising to me is how well she has matured over those four months. If you remember in the Five Fundamentals, she was kind of ornery. She had been taken away from her family, her herd, at four months and put in with a donkey and a llama. Didn't understand herd language, but I knew she had instinct, so I worked with that instinct, invoking her natural instinct to recognize me as the leader. And by the end of that series, I had her under saddle. But now we're going to work with some refinement issues, and I'm going to teach her how to ride iron free. As you saw in the previous DVDs, I was riding her with just a halter and lead rope. I have now advanced to what I call my all-in-one training halter bitless bridle. And the difference with this compared to a conventional rope halter is there are side pole loops now. So I ride only with my all-in-one because I can warm up my horse with it. It has the lead rope on the end and then all I do is just snap my reins to the side and now I have side pole action. Instead of under the chin, when I'm asking for that horse to flex and pulling from under the chin, now that horse has a nice solid turn which builds much better suppleness and flexibility. That's why I designed this all-in-one training halter bitless bridle. This is Tilly's first time riding with it, so we'll see how she does. It isn't much different than a bit, except with a bit you're using pain, with the all-in-one you're using pressure. There's a big difference between pain and pressure. And as you know, I do not use pain or fear to train my horses. I use pressure and leadership. So we're going to begin. Very good girl. I like your head down. Head down. Make sure if, if you've forgotten any of those five fundamentals or three foundations, go back and review your DVDs before you start riding. You want to get those things good on the ground so they translate under saddle for a safer ride. What I'm going to do to get rid of my lead rope is I'm just folding it in half. Let me move her over here so I can show you what I do. There's a couple things I do. When I'm riding with my casual soft saddle or my English saddle, I will use just a little uh, latigo string and string it through. But today, because I'm going to need a little extra side, you know, maybe a little extra, because remember we're not using spurs, so I need a little extra pressure at times if she gets stuck, if her feet get stuck. So I want this to hang off to the side. I'm going to thread it through the gullet like that. Until it, there you go. Like that, okay? And I'm just going to loop that over. And I'm going to toss this, and I want this to be, oh, you're so silly. I want this to be a comfortable length, not too short that she can't move, and not too long that she's getting hung up in it. And then I'm just going to loop it a couple of times around the horn to get the correct length off the side. And let's take a peek at that. Where are we at with that? Can you step over this way, please? Thank you. Good job. Yeah, perfect length. This will allow me to go back and forth if I need, or to tap on her bottom if I need to move her feet. Good girl, because remember, no spurs. There's ways we can get what we want out of our horses without the bits and spurs. Yes, and we're going to do that today now. So I'm going to put my helmet on. So I always wear a helmet when I'm training other people's horses. Oh, yeah. You want to smell that? Yeah, okay. You want to encourage curiosity with your horses because it replaces fear. Now the first thing I like to do when I mount a horse is I want to ask for her head around. And remember you learned this in the five fundamentals, it's the same thing. Ask for that nose. Good. Remember the safe and loving place we go when we're in trouble. Good girl. Very nice. And I want to do the other side. She's doing a good job standing. Stand. Good girl. 
good girl. All right. So now I'm going to ask her to just kind of move away from that mounting block. I'm going to be riding with a direct rein for now because she's just learning how to turn. When she went home, all she had was a walk, a little bit of a stop, a little bit of her, her turn signals. That was about it. First thing I want to do is teach her her brakes without the bit, and that means to stop. And I will be reinforcing the one rein stop since that's my emergency handbrake. And I use the, the one rein stop as a training tool as well. It's the safe and loving place, it's the emergency handbrake, and it is also a training tool. So as I'm asking her to hoe, and if she doesn't do it, then she'll get shut down in a one rein stop. So I'm going to ask her to go forward. I'm going to use my whole body. I'm going to squeeze and ask. My hands, everything goes forward so she gets that idea, good girl. And she's like, I don't know what to do here. And I'm going to pull, good girl. And so my hands are light and forward, try to keep my elbows in, but I'm exaggerating to teach her and we'll refine as we go. It's an old Clinton Anderson saying, exaggerate to teach, refine as you go. And I'm going to ask her. Now, whenever I'm making a turn, I make sure I'm focused on something in particular. For me, it was a pillar. I'm going to look over my shoulder, I'm going to turn her, and I've got my eyes on a pillar. That way my body's focused on which direction I want to go. So she'll tune into that. And keep going. See how she's kind of on the outside. She kind of walks along on the outside. Good girl. And I want to turn her, and then I'm going to do a one rein stop, make sure she understands that. Good girl. And a one rein stop. So I pull to my hip. I ask for that bottom. Good girl, she disengaged nicely, but you notice how unbalanced she is. It's been quite a while. Now I'm gonna ask for that front end to pop around. So I've got my right foot asking. Oh, excellent, very good. Guided her nose through that door. I opened the door with that left hand and guided her through. So that was my first one rein stop to the left, checking to make sure she's got it. And when I'm asking to turn, see I'm pulling to my hip and I'm using my body. A lot of my body is helping her direct the direction by turning my head, moving my legs, there, helping her full body. Because when you're riding iron free, you're riding more with your body. You're not relying so much on your halter bridle. There you go. But she has to learn that. So in the meantime, I'm just guiding her nose but I'm using my body to communicate to her and she'll pick that up over time. Good girl. And of course she's just learning so she's not good at straight lines. That's not important right now. What's important is that she learns to listen when I'm asking to turn and when I ask for a one rein stop. And we're gonna ask for one right over here. Good girl. Good girl. And a one rein stop. So I slide my hand, pull to the hip. I press with that right foot. I'm asking for those feet to move, so I'm going to tap. Good girl. You see, I pulled out my lead rope here, and I tapped. Good girl, because she wasn't coming off my feet, and I'm going to wait till her feet stop moving. Good job, and she gives me her nose. She has to be soft in hand, waiting for that nose. She's kind of hanging on it right now. There, good girl. And I'm going to ask for that front end, so you see my left outside foot, Asking that front end to come around. Come on, girly, you can do it. Excellent. I started to pick up that lead rope and she went, oh, okay, that's all right. Good girl. So you can get these refinements over time. Just take your time. It's patience because you're using pressure, not pain. Much more humane and thoughtful way to train your horse just with pressure and they'll, they'll get it. But remember, you have your emergency handbrake. You can always stop that horse. You can shut him down if things start going awry. I don't know how many, um, how many people you know or if you have yourself been on a runaway horse with a bit in their mouth, how'd the bit work then? It didn't. And I've had too many experiences myself for that. It's a false sense of security a bit. Now I understand you have to have a bit for shows, and that's not what kind of riding we're talking about. We're just talking about riding out on the trail, having a good time. You don't need a bit to control your horse. Good girl.
Now I'm going to go around to the edge and I'm going to ask her to hoe. And the way I like to ask a horse to hoe is I sit on my pockets like Julie Goodnight teaches. You sit on your pockets and I'm going to lift gently on the reins. And if I have to, I'll squeeze, which means I'll squeeze my fingers together and pull back a little bit if I need to give her a little reinforcement. And ho, two, three, good. And so what I did is I squeezed and as soon as I got it, I released my fingers. Good girl. Now she had kept walking out, what I call drifting or stepping out. I would have simply just shut her down in a one rein stop. Good girl. You can see how important this is to get this good on the ground. Now she's just walking out. I don't like that, so I'm going to shut her down. You can see how important it is to get this flexing good on the ground because it's going to translate under saddle. Tilly is flexing her head because she's been taught to do that on the ground. It's the same thing in the saddle, and that's going to make her a much safer horse for me, riding iron free with just using pressure. She's going to understand that. Good girl. And this is, this is quite, quite great that how well she's doing. She hasn't been ridden in over four months and she's doing good. She remembers things. So we're going to refine a little bit. We're going to turn. Good. And when I turn, I really just squeeze my fingers together. She's a little stuck. There you go. I squeeze my fingers and I pull to my hips. You want to make sure you're not pulling way out. You know, unless you're trying to do a turn on the haunch, then you would pull out like this and get that horse to move through the door. But when you're just making a turn, squeeze and pull and notice my outside rein. I leave that loose, giving her room to make that turn. And I'm over exaggerating for her. Oh, and she's stuck. I'm asking for this front end to come around. Come on. Good girl. And once her feet start moving, then I let her know, good girl, and I drop the pressure. The slightest try, the smallest change, I want to reward her for that. And turn. Good. This is all very confusing. It's a lot for her to have to do with. We're walking forward. I'm asking her to move from side to side, pulling her head, her nose. She's going, you know, this is interesting. I'm not quite sure what you want me to do. So she's pulling against me from time to time. But you notice those knots on this all-in-one are strategically placed to provide pressure on the nose. It's not pain, it's pressure. And as soon as she gives, the pressure stops and she gets instant release, instant release. That's how your horse learns. You've got to give instant release. Good girl. And this all in one gives that. And we're going to do a hoe. Oh, look at that. Look where my hands are. I didn't even have to pull back. My fingers are loose and she got it from my bottom. That is spectacular. That's what you want to get your horse to. When you're riding with your body, that's when your horse and you are one. You're in unison riding. That's when, it, when it's the sweet spot with the horse. So we'll keep working this and forward we go. And eventually I don't want to have to do my hands forward and my body forward, I'll just squeeze. So we'll start refining this a little bit and maybe refining these turns a little bit. Instead of me having to pull that nose, I want to just be able to squeeze my fingers with some pressure. But you know, she's young too. And she's got a little bit of um, distractive Distracted brain. She likes to look around. That's all right. I don't mind her looking around a little bit as long as she listens when I tell her something. And ho. Oh, wow. Wow. That was great. What a good girl. I'm going to let her think about that for a minute. That was spectacular. You did a great job. You're big stuff. You are such big stuff. Good girl. Now the next thing I'm going to do, the exercise I'm going to do is, she's just learning under saddle, and that's balancing me. She's having to balance me. And when I trot, I like to post. So I'm going to just start posting while I walk. And she's going, ooh, what's that? Oh, flair. It feels strange to her, but I'm just going to post a little bit while I walk. And she stops going, this is odd. I don't know. What are you doing? But I want her to get the feel of me posting. Good girl, and keep her going. Good girl, nice loose reins. Very nice loose reins. Horses love a loose rein. Trust your horse. And the way you trust your horse is teaching that one rein stop because that's going to build confidence in you 
that you have the ability to turn off your horse's engine. When you know you can do that, it gives you great confidence and trust, and then all of a sudden your horse is really doing what you want because you're trusting them to do what you want. But you have to build that, and building that with that one rein stop. Good girl, and ride without that bit, but ride in a controlled area while you're building your confidence and you and your horse are growing in this new sensation of being ridden without a bit. It's funny, I had a horse here from Nevada. He was here for four months. He'd had a pretty uh, traumatic start with a bit. The trainer, when, when this horse was five, and he's 15 when he came here, so 10 years ago he was started under saddle, and the trainer had actually bit his ear, eared him, with his teeth to drop the horse on the ground and force the bit in the horse's mouth because the horse didn't want to take the bit. Well, he was forced to take that bit and he then resulted in being a bucker, he reared, he was a pretty unhappy horse. He had a very uh, obviously dramatic uh, training start for him. I would say he was broken. I don't break horses, I start them under saddle because breaking has the, the, uh, the sense of breaking their spirit. And in the old days, that's what people did. And some people still do. They break the horse's spirit and will. Well, I don't do that. The horse and I have a harmonious spirit and will. We work together. So I start the horse under saddle, just teaching the horse about that. Well, this horse, when he came to me, of course, he had all the fear and the anger. And it was 10 years later, he hadn't been ridden in, I don't know how long before he came to me. And I started him with the all-in-one. And he'd, you know, work his mouth thinking, you know, where's the bit, where's the bit? He's working it and working it and shaking around and with his mouth, it was hilarious. He turned his mouth and, and do all these weird things because there was no bit, yet there was this pressure that he knew he had to yield to, but there was nothing he could do about it. He couldn't, uh, you know, chomp on the bit, he couldn't flip over backwards, or you know, there wasn't any pain inflicting him. So he was like, well, what do I do? And then he realized, well, this is kind of fun. This doesn't hurt, and I get to go out and do things now. And ho, oh, two, three, ah, didn't work, so I'm gonna shut her down. And I'm asking with my foot, good girl, good girl. And give me that nose, very nice. What I just did there is I asked her to stop. I'm asking for that front end, so I'm gonna pick this up. Good girl, excellent. What I asked her was for her to stop, and she didn't listen. And ho, oh, two, three, I count to a three. Sometimes I'll let them leak out at a four, but if I feel that they're gonna stop, then I'll, I'll go to a four. But anyways, I was counting, and she wasn't picking up on it. I thought, well, I'm not gonna get pulling back, because I don't wanna teach her to stop by pulling back. When you pull back, it just forces the horse's head to go up or you know they, they aren't listening when they're pulling when you're pulling back. You either want to stop them this way or put them in a one rein stop if they're not listening. She wasn't listening, so I just shut her down. And then she started, she wouldn't uh, uh, disengage those hind quarters, so I just bring the strap or the lead rope here. I just picked it up and she started moving because she recognized that that's what I was asking and that I was going to follow through and make her do that. Good girl, and so she did it. Very good. So you'll notice my body, I'm moving my body as I'm riding. I'm riding with life, as Frank Bell would say. It's important to ride with life, to be with your horse, and to look up. You know, I just caught myself looking at her. Gotta look up so your horse knows where they're supposed to go, because you are their eyes. You're their leader. You're their leader on top of them. You're their leader on the ground. And when you get scared, they're going, uh-oh, my leader's scared. I need to be scared. So control your feelings. If you're frightened, go ahead, shut your horse down and get off. There's no shame in getting off. If you have a frightening moment, if your horse spooks or shies, and you need to get yourself back, uh, you know, uh, get yourself relaxed over that, go ahead and get off. And remember, you, you've heard me say in my DVD series, Training the Whole Horse, get off your horse on the trail if your horse is frightened. It's okay to do that. Ho. Oh. Excellent. Just thought I'd throw that in. 
it's okay to get off. You're riding on the trail and the horse, you come to a stump and the horse is like, oh my God, it's a monster. It's okay to get off and go up to that stump and oh, isn't that interesting? There's no shame in doing that. And you heard me say this before, I'm gonna say it again. Don't listen to those people that are telling you, just force your horse, make them do it. That isn't going to, that isn't going to grow a trusting relationship. And that's what you need with your horse. A trusting relationship of leadership that you are providing and compassion that your horse can trust you in every situation. Hi, we're back today with Tilly. We're going to be working on some refinement moves with iron free riding. Today, I'm going to be using my crop. This is a replacement of spurs. I can get refinement with the cues from my heel with an, ex an extra tap of the crop when I need to. Just an extra little tap and she'll move off that cue to help her understand. Remember, iron free riding is no bits, no spurs. You can get the compliant precision you want with your horse without causing pain, just simple pressure and release. And remember, the release is everything. It must be instant, it must be crisp, so your horse learns and understands what you're asking. Because horses do not learn from the pressure, they learn from the release of pressure. Okay, so let's begin. Now with Tilly, I've run her through, oh, she's so funny. I've run her through her five fundamentals. She's already warmed up. I spent uh, three different times cinching her up. I don't believe in cutting a horse in half by cinching and going. That's a sure buck or rear if they've got some pinched skin. Stretching a horse out is a wonderful way to get that skin pulled out from under the arm. But you know, I'm, I'm a, a smaller woman and lifting a foot and pulling it forward is hard for me, especially if the horse steps forward, leans into me. So I find it so much easier to just warm that horse up over a two or three period of time while I'm cinching. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna warm up a little bit in a walk, and we're going to make sure the brakes are working. I'm gonna ask her to hoe, and I'm gonna make sure I have my one rein stop in both a walk, uh, and we'll try to see if we can get into a trot today. So I'm gonna squeeze with my legs to get her forward. Remember, she's just learning to ride. Good girl. And I have my crop ready to tap if I need to, to get her going, or to move off my feet. So I'm gonna look to the direction I'm going. I'm asking to turn right. So I pull to my hip and my outside rein is against the neck because remember what I want eventually is my horses to neck rein. So I immediately teach my horses, uh, start teaching neck reining right off with the direct rein as, as a start. You direct rein with the outside rein on the neck. So I'm gonna ask and I'm also using my feet. When I pull to the left, my left foot puts pressure on that left side of hers so that moves her bottom around. I use my body, so I'm turning in the saddle, therefore she's feeling that through her body that my body is turning and I'm following up with the reins. Because eventually, I wanna ride with very little reins, I wanna ride with just my body. So we're gonna walk forward and then I'm gonna ask her to hoe in a three count. So I'm gonna sit in my pockets, hoe two. Isn't that beautiful? Look at where my hands are. I didn't even have to use my reins because I've taught her now, when I sit on my pockets, as Julie Goodnight teaches, you stop. And the way I got her, remember in the first half of this, the way I got her to stop when she didn't understand is I reached down and I put her in a one rein stop. I put my foot back. I asked for that rear disengagement. Good girl, good girl. I just touched with that crop a little bit to, to in, reinforce what I was asking. And I'm gonna ask for that outside foot, front foot to cross over, and off she goes. Good girl. And the reason why I do that, the reason why I like a horse to turn on their haunch like that from time to time, is it really helps connect the brain and the feet. And it helps that horse know where his body is. You'd be surprised how many horses don't know where their rear end is. They try to go through a 12 foot gate and they're frightened because they think they're bigger than the gate. They just don't know. Now I'm going to make sure that my one rein stop is working. So we're going to do this in a walk. I'm going to tuck that crop in my boot because as I do the one rein stop, I don't want my crop touching her bottom. Good girl. So 
So we're going to turn right again, and you notice my body, turning my body, and she is not going very straight yet. And that's, that's real normal for horses when they're first starting to learn to ride. They don't go straight. They tend to lean one way or another. So I'm going to reach down, I'm going to sit back, I'm going to put that right foot back, bump those hindquarters, I'm going to point, now, ah, good girl! But I don't release that nose until her feet stop moving and I stop asking. Oh, when she's biting me and I don't like that. And when she gives, nicely, give, be soft on that rein. Oh, good girl, and I release and tell her what a good girl she is. Remember, rub that neck, it invokes that uh, neurochemical response for them, calms them down, makes them feel good, and it increases their learning capacity and capability. Remember, number one is appreciation for that four core concerns that you and your horse share. Good girl, so I appreciate her for that. Now I'm gonna turn her around and we're gonna go the other direction. So I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that my one rein stop is good in both directions. So we're gonna walk out. I'm gonna turn her to the left and put my left foot on her body to turn that bottom to follow that head. Good girl, very good. And she's doing such a good job listening. Very nice and rational. I like that rational behavior. Good girl. Now I'm going to reach down. I'm going to lean back a little bit. Put that foot. I want those feet to disengage. Excellent. Good girl. I release my foot. And as soon, oh, good job. I'm going to ask for that right foot to come around. So I want her to, to cross, but she's not going to listen. Oh, good girl. I'm going to tap. Good job, good job. So I used the crop as extra pressure when I put my foot on that girl. She didn't quite listen because she was nibbling on my toes, being a little distracted, she's young. And she doesn't have all her teeth in yet, so she's kind of uh, mouthy. And I'm asking, I'm gonna tap, good girl. As soon as I get what I want, I release. Keep her going, good job. We're gonna do that again. So you see I ride with one hand at times, and then when I go to turn, I pick up. Pull to my hip, good girl. And a one rein stop, and you notice I use the word and. Look at that disengagement, excellent. Nice head, good, nice and flexible. Ask for that front end to come around. Oh, very good, very smooth indeed. Now I wanna show you how to get your horse to flex on the vertical. I want that horse to drop his nose or drop her nose because then I'm gonna be setting her up to back up. I want her to learn to back up. But I want her to round her back. Because you know, if you've got your head high, try backing up with your head up. It's really uncomfortable. Drop your head and back up. You'll notice it elongates your muscles. Well, that's what we wanna do for her. We wanna elongate her back muscles, which opens her up and eases her backing up. When you have a high head, you have a stressed horse. It's important to teach that horse to drop their head, especially in stressful situations. In here, I've taught her on the ground to drop her head, get relaxed, so I'm gonna teach her under saddle. So what I'm gonna do, let me turn her a little bit so you can see from the side as well. I need you to step over, shorten my rein a little bit. There, good girl, good. So you get just a tiny bit of a side view. Let me, let me turn her again, I think she kinda likes the camera. Yeah, okay, there, very nice, good job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my reins, I'm gonna shorten a little bit, and she may start backing up, that's okay. I'm not asking her to back up, I'm asking her to drop that head. So I'm gonna squeeze, and what I mean by squeeze, is I'm gonna squeeze my fingers together, which brings pressure, so I'm squeeze, and then I'll start pulling back. Don't pull out, pull back. Let me show you something. And you got your wrists like this. If you go like this, now where's my elbows? See how stiff my elbows are and they're up? I have no leverage doing that. You don't wanna use your wrists so much as you wanna squeeze your fingers together and pull back. Look how much leverage I have when I keep my elbows in and my wrists straight. That's a habit a lot of people get is trying to do everything in the wrist and don't do that. Your wrists aren't that strong. You have much more leverage up this way. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze and I'm gonna pull towards me and oh, good girl! As soon as she gave a little bit of, of a nod, I released. I want her to drop that nose and get comfortable with, with what I'm asking. And I'm going to squeeze. Good girl. And a little more. And I'm going to ask, drop your head. And I'm going to say, drop your head. Drop your head. Good. And drop your head. Drop your head. Good girl. I'm going to love her up. 
appreciate her so she understands she's doing the right thing. And if she licks and chews, it's all the better. But no lick and chew yet. Good job. Because remember, licking and chewing means, oh, I got it. It's relaxation, chewing her thoughts, licking her brain, as Clinton Anderson would say. Okay, and squeeze. Good girl! You notice I didn't even have to pull back. Just I squeezed my fingers together. That was excellent. Now, I'm going to ask her to back up. And I'm going to do it the way I taught her on the ground at first, was the agitation when I agitated under her chin to back up. You know, I did a little snaking. Well, this time, I'm going to agitate with the reins while I'm asking with one foot. And I do one foot, two foot, one foot, two foot to back her up. But I start with an agitation along simultaneously with one leg. So I'm going to ask for this left shoulder. If she steps with her right shoulder, that's great. I'll switch my foot to the right. So eventually she'll get, oh, it's when she puts her foot on, I've got the right, um, correct shoulder. I'm moving the correct shoulder. It'll take her a little while to figure that out, but that's all right. I'm going to first start with the agitation of the rein. And where I want to go is I pick up my rein, she drops her head, and then I one, two, and I paddle her back. That comes in time. But this is how you can start it. And remember, be patient with your horse. Break it down into small steps. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the head down, good girl. Now I'm gonna ask, and I'm gonna say back up, because she understands it too. Put my left foot on her, I'm gonna go back, 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 back. And agitate a little more, good girl, good girl. Good job, she did one foot, that's excellent. That's excellent, good job. Now I'm gonna try the right foot, back, Oh, look at that. That head down was great. And back, back, agitate, and back, back. And it's okay if she lifts her head. She, it's, she'll get this refined eventually. Back, 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 back. <laughs> She's fiddling with her nose. Back. Good girl. Good job. And she took a right foot back, that right shoulder. And that and I had my right foot there. That was excellent. And she's like, she doesn't get what she's done. And it's okay that she lifts her head. So we find that eventually when I pick up the reins, she'll drop her head and then we'll back up. But I need her just to get the basics of backing up, backing up. And eventually she'll do it with my feet. I want her to go forward. Forward now. We're going forward now. I want you to step up a little bit. I'm going to pull out my crop. When I say forward, I mean it. Thank you. Good girl. And ho. Excellent. Very good. We're going to do some more backup. Just a little bit. Now the key, too, is not to drive this in the ground. I'm not looking for perfection today. Perfection will come. Remember, it's the journey. How you get there with your horse is what's going to determine whether that horse is going to be there. When you're on the ground, that horse goes and runs off to be with the neighbors or comes back and helps you up off the ground. So the journey will determine what kind of relationship you have with your horse. Good girl. So just going to try it again. Now she's all anticipating. But I'd like you to drop your head first. Good job. Now back up. And I'm just squeezing back up. And then I'll start agitating. Agitating. Back up. Back up. I like where her head is. That's nice. Back up. Good girl, good girl, and I like that she kept her head down. Wasn't that great? Of course, she didn't quite understand that, but that's all right. And head down, good girl, and back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Good girl. Instantly, I released my foot when she did it. And you notice I'm not agitating as hard, just a little bit. I start with a squeeze, and then I add a little more pressure, and eventually all I have to do is pick up those reins. We're gonna try one more time each side. Head down, now back up, back up. Look at that, I didn't even have to agitate the rein. Isn't that awesome? And after a while, you can get a good rhythm going. Get your head down, I need your head down. Now she, and there's a time of confusion where they think, oh, I'm supposed to back up. And I got my feet off, so she gets no cues there. Now I'll ask her to back up, and back up, back up. Excellent, and I'll switch the foot and back up, and back up and get a rhythm going. Agitate a little bit. Back up, back up, back up. Good girl, and back up. Good girl, that's good. I've planted the seed and I'm gonna leave it there for today. We're not gonna back up anymore. That's real good. Just plant the seed. Good job.
going to start Tilly on some lateral movements. And lateral means crossing her front feet in front of one another and her back feet in front of one another. And the way I like to start a horse doing laterals is, as you know, we did that on the ground and yielding hindquarters and yielding forequarters. We taught that on the ground with the five fundamentals. Now I'm going to walk her down the wall. And as I walk down the wall, I'm then going to turn her nose into the wall and I'm going to use that foot. Say I turn her to the left, I'm going to use my left foot. I'm going to bump as I open my right rein out so that she can move through that opposite direction. And you're going to see me leaning, pushing her weight through what I call through the door. She needs to go through the door. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're going to head on down. Get going, girly. You know how she can be. Oh, dee -da. There we go. Come on. There we go. And I'm asking you to turn this way. I want you to get going. Don't make me take the crop out. There you go. And if I have to use the crop, I will. But I really want her to listen to my body, listen to my cues. And she's a colder, easygoing horse. So she's going to want to just go slow and walk and do her thing. So we're going to walk down the wall. Now I'm going to pull her to the left. And with my left foot, I'm going to bump. I'm going to open up that door and see how she's crossing those feet. Good girl. Good girl. Isn't that beautiful? Now I can start straightening up my body and using my foot. Excellent. That was supreme. You notice how dramatic I was at first, and then I refined as, I, as she continued to walk down the wall. Then I started to straighten out my body and just using my foot and a little bit of the rein opening that door. I leaned real hard to push her away from me, and then as she kept going and, and getting better, then I was able to sit more straight. Remember, uh, be dramatic to teach. Let's go. Let's try it again. Don't make me get the crop out. Come on. And I'm going to use there, I'm going to use my lead rope. Squeeze, cluck, spank. Good girl. You need to listen to where I want to go. Good girl. Good girl. Excellent. And look how nicely she's turning, too. She's doing much better. And to, she's going to have to learn to go straight. She's just, that's, that's going to take time. Horses don't go straight. It's not natural to them to go straight. So we're going to go down the wall. I'm going to pull that nose. And I'm going to use that foot, and I'm going to bump, 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 and look at how she goes down. Oh, good curl. She turns a little bit too soon, but that's okay. We're just going to continue teaching her to go. Now I want her to go the other way. This is pretty good. She's got this, the, the seed planted for that direction. She's pretty good that direction. But we'll see about this direction. This may not go as well. You know, horses are good on one side, typically better than the other. Girl, I'm gonna walk down the wall here. Good girl, walking down. I'm gonna pull to the right. I'm gonna use my right foot and open that door to the left. A little bit. She started a little bit. Okay, she stopped. Her feet are stuck. That's okay. Your horse is gonna get stuck at times, and so you're gonna need to get their feet moving. Get going. Good girl. And I whack her on the bottom because I'm squeezing. I don't want to have to kick. And I'm not using spurs, I'm using pressure. And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Excellent! She did it! What I added was the one, two, because she knows that on the ground. When we were doing laterals, I got her to go one, two, one, two, and she understood that. So I added that verbal to help her translate that under saddle. And she, oh, I get that. So I'm going to let her soak on that because we've had a real struggle with this going to the left in a lateral. So she did it once. The important thing is to stop while you're ahead. She needs to soak on that. Soak that in a little bit. Good girl. Very good girl. You did a good job. I'm just going to let her think about that. Excellent girl. Very, very nice. Very good girl.